Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. For this video, I'm going to be showing you how I do my weekly review. I loosely follow the getting things done method. I am reading the book right now and I'm slowly introducing elements of the book to my planning system. But for now, I'm just going through what I've learned from other videos and from articles online. So this is more of a loose interpretation of the GTD method. But hopefully this video gives you ideas or inspiration to try out the method because so far it's been really working well for me. And if this video interests you at all, do consider subscribing. I make more videos about journals, planners, and pens. So this video is going to be more chatty, casual. I didn't script this one. I'm just going to be going with the flow. And one of the most famous elements of GTD and the one that you probably see around is the inbox. David Allen calls it the in system and he has this whole setup that he suggests for you to use. I'm still working on that. It involves like file folders, a file cabinet. I don't have a file cabinet just yet. I, I am slowly working towards building up the in system that he suggests. But for now, my inbox involves this tray, which is empty because there hasn't been a lot going on with everything. And I also keep a brain dump type of inbox on my phone. Here I actually use Google Keep. Let me brighten up the screen for you. I use Google Keep for my brain dump inbox where I just write down anything that comes to my mind. And I like to use my phone as opposed to a paper planner for brain dumping because my phone is always with me and if it's not with me, I'm always looking for it. So in my experience, it's more efficient to keep my inbox in my phone than in a planner. Because I've tried that before and I always tend to leave my planner behind when I go from room to room because I get distracted by the baby or something else that comes up and I just forget to take it with me. But I always keep my phone with me. So with my paper tray empty, we're gonna go through my phone inbox. Just read it out to you. And I've used Google Keep for years. I used Google Calendar and Google Keep way before I switched to paper planning. So I'm very comfortable with Google Keep. I've tried different digital apps before like Asana and Trello, but I always end up coming back to Google Keep. So let's go through my inbox. I have a couple of items here and I'll just read it out to you. Refill soap bottle, our bathroom hand soap bottle was out so I already did that because that, that didn't take very long. Lower crib, I actually delegated that to my husband earlier today and that's one of the things that David Allen tells you to do with an inbox item. If you can't do it in two minutes, you can either delegate it or assign it for a later date. So don't be afraid to delegate tasks to other people. Fly lady control planner, oh yeah, I watched Milk and Honey Life's video about her control planner and I really like that idea because I feel like I could be more organized with my home management so I'm going to give it a shot and Levenger recently had a weekend sale when everything was 40% off so I actually bought the disc punch and a set of discs and I'm gonna try to make my own home binder so I'm really excited about that so actually I am waiting on my order to arrive so I'm gonna put it on my waiting on list Lavender order. Here we go. I just wrote it down. So fly lady control planner that has been processed. Move action categories to Google Keep. I'm actually gonna assign that to my planner because that takes more than two minutes. So I'm not gonna do it right now. Right now I am processing my inbox. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in my planner. And I will link my previous video on how I use my Moleskine planner. Uh, down below, and that explains what this tracker is for. See you. I'm just gonna go ahead and write for today. Okay, sorry, that was off screen. Um, but I went ahead and wrote it down here. This is the current week's spread. I haven't decorated it, as you can see. So back to my inbox. This item has been processed. It's been put into my calendar or my planner. David Allen makes a distinction between your calendar and your next actions list, which if anybody's curious about the getting things done method and they want me to make a video, I'd be happy to do that. And then the last thing on my inbox is make home binder collection. So one thing about processing your inbox is David Allen wants you to decide your next action, your next physical action. So make home binder collection, that's kind of a vague 
task like how do you make something like what's the first step in making this collection it doesn't really tell you much so i have to think about the next physical step that i need to do to make this happen i don't really know exactly what i want to put in a home binder so i have to figure that out i have to research what people put in a home binder so that's going to be my first actionable step i have to do the research i'm actually going to make a spread on my planner I'm gonna backtrack a little because I have a blank page somewhere in here. One sec. Okay, so I'm going to make a spread on this empty page in my planner. Okay, so here is my spread. I kind of messed up on my lettering. Please don't judge me. So to explain this page real quick, whenever an inbox item involves two or more tasks to complete, David Allen calls that a project. So you would want to plan it as if it was an entire project. And for me, I also follow the bullet journal method. And in the bullet journal method, whenever you have a project with multiple tasks, you're supposed to create a collection page for it, which is what I'm doing here. So the first step in making my home binder, like I said, is to do the research. Okay, so here's what I wrote. It says research page contents online. So that is a clear actionable task. It tells you what exactly you're supposed to do, where you need to do it, and what you're looking for. So what are you going to do? You're going to do research. Where are you going to do it? Online. And what are you going to research? Page contents for your home binder. So that is step one. And I'm just going to leave that there for now because I need to write down my research on this page. And then after that, I'll decide what my next action step is. So that is good for now. So with our home binder spread finished, we can check this off. It has been processed and our inbox is officially empty. So now I'm gonna go ahead and review my waiting on list and my someday maybe list and see if there's anything I can put in the forefront. So I am waiting on the Levenger order that I mentioned before, a Toyota recall letter, someday maybe list, let's see. Nothing I really want to take some action on right now, so that'll all just stay in the back burner. And then I also have a fold out on my pocket planner and I like to keep this fold out in my pocket planner so that I can keep this out in the open while I flip through my main planner and I'm not constantly flipping back to look at this list so this first part of my fold out is here so I can double check that I'm doing everything on my weekly review so capture brain dump anything in my head onto paper I've done that over the course of the week did I get my to-dos done? Did I progress on any goals? Mm, I did okay. I didn't really technically finish last week's goal, but I'll finish that up this week. Scan the next four weeks. I do have a doctor's appointment next week. I know that is coming up. After that, everything's up in the air because we're just staying home. Review annual or quarterly goals. My quarterly goal this quarter is to reach 100 YouTube subscribers, which I actually did accomplish earlier this week, so hooray! Anything to be changed, added, or deleted? Oh, let me see. Let me see if I can flip through my Q1 goals page. Or Q2 goals, excuse me. Baby proof the house. I am working on that. I have three goals for Q2. Like I mentioned, the 100 YouTube subscribers. Plan blog. I've been thinking about starting another blog because I really miss writing. And I have more experience with blogging and I feel like I could be more efficient with it. So I've been thinking about whether I want to start a blog about planning or not. So for Q2, I'm just going to start planning on it and figure out if it's something I want to do or not. Baby proof the house. Yes, I am working on that. Good, good. Clear out mail and inboxes. Let me check my Gmail. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and use my phone. All right, so that is good. The second part of my foldout is the trigger list, just to make sure that I didn't forget anything. 
Uh, I'm sure I saw fair balls in Nope, I think we're good. Anything that comes up over the course of the week, I'm just gonna go ahead and put on in my inbox if it's not urgent. Oh, and then the last part of my fold out here is just a flow chart. It's good to have for reference. So that is my weekly review. So I'm gonna go ahead and plan the upcoming week. Okay, so here's the upcoming week. I am filming this on Sunday the 19th. Here is how I plan the upcoming week every Sunday. First off, I pick a weekly goal, as I mentioned in my previous video. If you want more detail on how I use this planner, just check out that video. I have everything on there. First off, I'm going to choose what to do sticker to put down. I try to choose a color that matches the spread. I don't know, I might just use this sticker. <laughs> and this is the only sticker that I'm going to put down, I promise. Alright, so my to-do sticker. For my weekly goal, I need to clear out some boxes in the living room. So I'm going to break down this goal into manageable chunks throughout the week so that I'm not too overwhelmed and I'm able to do all of my other daily tasks. Okay, I'm not really sure what the next step is after clearing out the boxes, so I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. <laughs> you know, this, this is flexible and I'll figure it out as the week goes on. I also have a doctor's appointment on Thursday and I did cover up the info because it has the location and the phone number. So next I'm going to put down some grid paper on this side and the grid paper is going to be for tracking my baby's solids for the week because he has a facial rash and I'm trying to figure out if that is possibly from a food allergy. He also has eczema. so. I might just be irritating his face. I think I was just too rough, but just to be sure, I'm going to keep tracking his food for this week as well. And then I'm gonna put down my daily chore tracker. I'm just gonna cut this up and then tape it in here. I wrote down when I should post on my Instagram and I also remembered that I need to put down trash reminders and tomorrow I plan on editing this video and taking the thumbnail picture. Not much else is going on. Again, I have my appointment on Thursday. Other than that, we're just staying home and my husband happens to be off this week. So that's like another point for not having much to do this week. He's gonna be around to help me out, which is great. So this is a bit of a light week, but I'm sure these rows are going to get filled out as the week goes on, as it usually does. Like this is last week's spread, and as you can see, it's pretty filled up. And then, so I'm going to start putting down my tracker for my baby. Alright, so here's how my baby food tracker looks like to start. I have the days of the week lined up with the days of the week on the left side. I have Saturday and Sunday on the same row, just like on this page. And that's fine, this is plenty of room for me. So my plan is to write down what my baby has for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm going to note how his face rash is throughout the week. And I'll see if reintroducing tofu, which is right over here, is gonna do any changes and if not then we'll be good all right so that is it for my mole skin i know that's not very exciting but that's legitimately how i plan throughout the week and then the last thing i'm going to do is i want to have a general idea of what we're going to eat for the week and i do use my pocket planner for meal planning just because 
I tend to be messy with it and I scratch things out. I just want it to be very flexible and fluid and if I scratch out too much on my moleskin planner, it tends to get really messy and it makes me feel really frazzled, so that's why I put it in my pocket planner. I think this is what you would call an extension planner. That's the term I've been seeing around YouTube and Instagram. I also have a video on how I use this planner. I'll link it below. So first off, since this is an undated insert, I'm going to write down the date. The dates. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to make sure I'm up to date with my spending tracker. I need to update it. I uh, ordered some stuff from Levenger yesterday because they had a weekend sale and I spent a lot this month. <laughs> I'm ashamed. <laughs> Alright, that has been updated. Sorry it's off screen. Just I try to keep that private. <laughs> so that is it for my pocket planner. And then one last thing that I almost forgot to do is I'm going to double check on the documents I have in my big back pocket. Just make sure that these things are still relevant. So I've got a stack of documents in here. And they do contain some personal info, so I'm going to have to do it off screen. Sorry about that. Okay, so these documents have been processed. I'm just going to go ahead and put them back in the back pocket. And some of them I do plan on putting in my home binder once my order comes in. And that is my plan with me for this week. I know that was probably not very interesting. There isn't a lot of decoration, if there were any at all. But this is legitimately how I plan every Sunday. It's just writing down the important things, putting down on my planner as much as I can, so I have a general idea of how my week is going to go. I hope that was helpful. I hope that was informative. I hope it gave you some ideas on how to do the weekly review. If you are using the GTD method, let me know below. I'd love to know how you use it because I'm always looking for ideas and feedback. This is Spellbound Notes and I will see you next time. Bye!